question is that the bill be now read a second time. Mr. Liang Eng Hua. Mr. Speaker, I wish to declare my interest that I work in the financial institutions with trade and transact in securities, including government securities. So the government has issued more debts over the years, largely for investment purposes, uh, and also to develop the bond market and to manage the CPF money. Earlier this year, the House has also passed the Significant Infrastructure Government, government Loan Act, SINGA, in which the proceeds raised can only be used to fund uh, major and very long-term key infrastructures. So the government's balance sheet has indeed expanded, and, it has, and hence it has made good sense to do some housekeeping uh, to the various government, government borrowing legislation, and in particular this bill to consolidate the Government Security Act and the Local Treasury Bills Act, as well as make consequential amendments and uh, repeals to the other acts. So notwithstanding my support, I have three questions for the Minister. Uh, firstly, can I use this opportunity to seek an update on the outstanding amount of securities that the government issued uh, under the GSA and the LTBA. Secondly, uh, Clause 14 of the Act merged the two borrowing limits, the GSA and the LBTA, into a single borrowing limit of $1.065 trillion. Uh, can I ask the Minister for the basis of this change? Uh, the reason for my question are as follows. Uh, firstly, SGS are long-dated securities long dated debts uh, greater than one year, while the Treasury bills tend to be just a few months to a year. Uh, both debts come with different tenuous repayment obligations. The Treasury bills tend to be more liquid in the trading markets because it is shorter dated. Hence, from the credit market standpoint, the two debts, uh, say the three-month Treasury bills versus the 20 years SGS, would be accorded with different risk rating. So can I ask, does the Minister see, uh, uh, or, or does MOF see the need to retain these separate borrowing limits for these two buckets of issuance, given that they both have different risk profiles? My third question is, uh, the main bulk of the securities issued by the governments is the Special Singapore Government Securities, the SSGS, which I believe accounts for about 70% of the SGS. Uh, this is issued to CPF board so that the governments can pay uh, the bond coupon rates uh, to the CPF members, which match the interest that the CPF members receive. Uh, these bonds are not traded in the market and are directly placed with CPF. Hence, it is not for the purpose of creating high-quality liquid assets for the financial institutions or to build a domestic risk-free yield curve, as opposed to the purpose of SGS. Because of its sheer size, uh, the, this SSGS, uh, it, it, that, and it, that it will continue to grow in tandem with the higher wages and growth in our residents' workforce, we can expect the SSGS to get even more sizable as the CPF savings increase. Uh, as the SSGS is aggregated with the SGS, the overall debt level of the governments will come across as very high relative to our GDP and give the impression that a lot, of our, a lot more SGS are issued or traded in the market. This uh, CPF-related issuance, the SSGS, are also not uh, invested by external investors because it's held by the CPF members, CPF board. And the size of issuance and coupon rates, therefore, do not have any impact on the Singapore government bond market, Singapore bond market, as well as nor its uh, liquidity. Hence, I would suggest that MOF consider classifying these privately placed securities, which are privately placed to the CPF board, as CPF bond rather than call it the SGS and it should come under a separate borrowing limits uh, and, of course, to be approved by the Parliament and the President. And this will give, give greater clarity to the market participants and the analysts on the level of borrowing by the government. So notwithstanding my queries, I support these technical amendments in this bill. Thank you.